I'm sure you know alchemy is kind of mystical and, let's be honest, a little weird. It's all about preparing ingredients and using the right method to unlock special powers. Even something as simple as an apple can be turned into pure magic if you know what you are doing. In Alchemy's The Potion Manga, you will level up your alchemy skills with the help of adorable animal bellies. So let me show you what this game is about, if it's worth your time and money, and then you can tell me what do you think. At first glance, you might think this is just a cozy, cute, feel-good potion-making game, but don't judge book by its cover. Sure, the world is colorful and sugar sweet, but it doesn't take long to see there's a darker side lurking beneath other charm. Alchemist the Potion Monger is a mix of simulator and adventure. You play as a newbie alchemist starting fresh in a new place after buying some land and a rundown house. Luckily, the game skips the boring stuff like renovations. You are already moved in and ready to start unpacking. Your job? Craft potions. You will start with easy ones, but as you unlock better recipes, you will need stronger ingredients. Once you are settled in and rested, oh, wait, who might that be? Evie is the first person you met and she offers a little help getting you into town, but here is the twist, she doesn't tell you the whole truth and you end up paying the butt of her joke. Later, you can either help her out or get your sweet revenge, your choice, no spoilers here. I love when simulator games include a story, it keeps things interesting. Do you like that too? In Alchemy's The Potion Manga, the story blends light and heavy quests that challenge you. Often you will need to craft specific potions to solve problems, but here is the kicker. You usually don't have the right ingredients, recipe or even the equipment. Sure, there is a tool shop in town where you can get everything you need, but you will need cash first. Kinda frustrating, right? The good news is after a few first quests, you are not forced to follow the later ones or push the story forward, and you can focus yourself on making potions. However, skipping them means missing out on cool features. And look at content, like the Red Eye Course, which completely changed the game for me. That said, a few areas and events are locked behind quests, so eventually you will hit that wall. On the bright side, quests are usually worth it, offering great rewards and unlocking my favorite thing, which I will reveal later. Quick stop, if you are into indie games and hidden gems, consider subscribing, you will stay up to date on cool releases, and I will keep bringing you info on our some games you never heard of. Thanks, and back to the video. The game is fully 3D with a first-person perspective. Perfect if, like me, you enjoyed that immersive vibe. You will explore the world, hunting for ingredients for your sips. Fun thing here, the developers actually researched alchemy. Many herbs and mushrooms in the game have the real world properties and Latin names. Of course, there are fantasy elements too, because, well, you are in magical world. Your main tools? A huge cauldron and mortars. These are basic but essential for mastering alchemy. Ingredients fall into four elemental categories. Earth, air, fire and water. Many items have multiple properties, so your job is to extract only the ones you need. Add the wrong stuff and... A step backward is sometimes a step in the right direction. Simple, right? Okay, not that simple. It took me a while to understand the process. Thankfully, there's a handy tab that shows you ingredient properties. As you discover them. Thanks to few starting quests, you will also get a Philosopher's Stone, which helps you showing what ingredients and tools you need to market recipes in your almanac. Experimentation is key here, try different methods or learn from your mistakes. But fair warning, complex recipes can be frustrating. I once had to retry a recipe multiple times, run back and forth to shopkeeper for more apples and even wait for his stock to reset. Talk about patience. There is some basic fighting in the game, but you don't earn XP, instead you get loot and ingredients. For XP you have reputation which grows as you complete quests and save wars. You can increase your damage by buying better weapons or using potions that help you survive and take down enemies faster. This comes in handy, especially during boss fights. And yes, there are bosses. You will need to beat them to progress and unlock new pets. As promised, let's talk about the pets. I really like how the system works here. In most games, pets are just for show. Maybe they expand your inventory or follow you around looking cute. But in this game, you can adopt up to four pets each tied to elemental category. We will start with Shiba Inu assigned it to the Earth category. The coolest part? He is actually helpful. Give him earth related items to do some sniffing about them and he will reveal their properties for you. Nice. The second pet, a cat, comes from a boss fight and helps with air properties. You can also of course bed, which is both adorable and fun. If you are an animal lover, you will be totally satisfied with this feature. I had a blast playing this game, the design and audio creates a cozy relaxing world, but if you are in the mood for something spookier, 
the game has darker moments too. It all fits nicely into the overall vibe. I did run into a couple of bags, twice the game froze after I started a conversation and I had to restart it. Sometimes enemies floated above the ground, but honestly, I didn't care much about that. There is also a glitch with your shop, sometimes people just won't buy anything, even if you are set super low prices, and quick restart usually fixes it though. What I love most, the narrator voice, he comments on your decisions, events, and even drops some references to pop culture. It's a fun touch that adds personality to the game, making it more as you are magical adventure. One thing I wish for is the option to reload contracts. Sometimes you can't complete them because you are missing receipts, equipment or ingredients. But the good thing is that there is no penalty, no taxes or time-based costs. So you can just wait for new contracts the next day. I appreciate that the game doesn't push you to play hard. You can chat with a variety of NPCs, decorate your home with new furniture, fight different enemies and explore new areas, and grow your reputation at your own pace. So in overall, is this a good game? Yes, I had fun playing it and I still didn't told you about everything. Like for example, you can have your own garden with herbs and flowers. So yep, it's a good game. Oh and please tell me what do you think about the game. See ya.